Welcome to the Porn Free, Shame Free podcast, produced by Caleb Micah Ministries. We hope God uses this resource to help you pursue freedom found only in Jesus. Hey, thanks for joining us today. Um, We're glad you're with us. One of the things we're going to hit on today is the idea of what does it mean uh, to walk in freedom for a lifetime, and, and but you're like, for a lifetime, I haven't even started like, you know, day one. Well, what we want to talk about, what does it look like to not even put myself in a position to where I can be tempted? And what happens, especially with pornography online, there's these groove patterns that are formed in my brain that when I experience X and I and in my brain in the past, what I've done is escape from whatever that thing was, and then I want to run to porn, like there's there's this groove that just has developed and developed and developed and developed. And it reminds me of when we had a yellow lab and our yellow lab, man, she was super uh, sweet to our kids, but she was also like crazy hyper. And in our backyard, but I will tell you like right off the bat, nerd alert, like I like doing my yard and she would go in the backyard and she would just run circles and circles and circles in the backyard. And no matter what I did, I'd have this like perfectly pristine green backyard with this dirt path circle where our yellow lab had run. Because there was this path, this groove that had been developed. And what I figured out is if I, if I put seed down, she'd still, she'd run on it and trample it. If I did new sod, she would just run on it long enough that eventually it became dirt too. There was nothing I could do to fix what was going on in the backyard unless I never let the dog go back there again, which I'm not going to do. In essence, if I wanted her to not do that, I had to starve her of the opportunity. It's the same thing with our brain. I have to be starved from acting out, but sometimes I have to be starved from even being tempted. And one of the greatest ways that we're tempted is through technology. Guys, everything is sexy today. Everything. Even things that I don't think are sexy. I don't know what town you live in, but in the town I live in, there are billboards that if you drive down the highway, you see like, we make sexy teeth. And I want you just to think about that for a second. Like sexy teeth. I mean, I'm not saying we should objectify people, but you ever been like sitting in the bleachers when you were in junior high or high school and watch somebody that you thought was attractive walk by and look over at the person next to you and go, man, those are the best looking teeth I've ever seen on anyone. No, we don't think teeth are really sexy, but we have overly sexualized our culture. And one of the places where things are overly sexualized is through media. When I help the folks that we help walk through freedom from sexual sin, we ask them to abstain from media for a season. Sometimes that's a couple weeks, sometimes that's a month, sometimes that longer. You're like, what does that mean, Josh? It means like no social media, no movies, You know, if you're young, no streaming TV. If you're old, no watching TV on cable or satellite, or if you're really old, the antenna. Like, so no social media, no movies, no TV. In essence, no anything that could potentially set you up for being tempted sexually. And you're like, really? Are you kidding me, man? Like, why would I need to do this? I was like, here's my question right now. You tell me that you can go to Instagram and not see one thing that potentially arouses you. Promise me that right now. Oh, wait, you can't? That's right, you can't. How about we stop ascribing to this idea of, well, I just need to be stronger. No, we just need to be wiser about what causes us to fall. What if you would be willing to say, I'm gonna abstain from all of it for a month? And then while you're doing that, asking God, what are the things when I go back into media, do I introduce myself to? I've had guys that did this. They abstained from it for a month, except what they had to do for school or work. And then they came back and they said, hey, Josh, after meeting with you and starting this process, what I realized is I have to delete Instagram forever. Like that, that's, that, that trips me up. Great. I've had guys who've come back and said, I have to get rid of my smartphone. I don't know how I'm going to do that in life. 
but I, I got to get rid of it. Well, there are ways to do that. I've had guys who've come who are even college students, like, I got to get rid of my laptop. I got to get rid of my iPad. I can only do school through the computer lab. What I'm asking you to consider is the impact that media may have on the sexual purity of your life. And would you be willing, would you be willing to do what Jesus talks about in Matthew chapter five? In Matthew chapter five, when he's talking about lust, he says in verse 29, if your right eye caused you to sin, tear it out, throw it away. What? Are you serious? Then he says, if your right hand causes you to sin, cut it off, throw it away. It says, it is better for you to lose one of your members than for your whole body to go to hell. See guys, some of you who are watching this, listening to this, think you know the Lord. It's possible that you're drowning in sexual sin because you don't. And part of the repentance that needs to occur is just placing faith in Christ. Some of you know the Lord, but the legacy you're gonna leave is not the legacy that you want. And there has to be a willingness to be committed to do something radical, like fasting from media for a period of time and then eliminating even maybe some of those parts of media, possibly for the rest of your life. Father God, I pray in Jesus' name, whoever's watching this, God, make very clear to them what they need to fast from. Would they know that fasting is just abstaining from one thing to spend more time with you? that every time they wanna you know, watch a movie or log on to Instagram or whatever, would that be a pull to go be in your word, to pray, to spend time with you or to spend time with God's people? God, would you give them the courage long-term to know what that looks like to get rid of it in their life, to cut off their hand, to tear out their eye? God, would they see it as worth it to pursue freedom for you? We say it in your name, amen.